Prachadine, Nervisesha Shunyabadi, Paschatya de Shatadine, Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vaiva Cha, Patita Nam Pavane, Vyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Bhagavad Gita and we're studying the first six chapters. Uh, let me go into the PowerPoint, share the screen. Is it coming through okay? Everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Good. So now we're into section B of unit 2, called Jnana, Gyan in Bhagavad Gita. And we're going to hear about Ishwara, Jiva and Prakriti, a big topic, an important topic in the Bhagavad Gita. Ishwara the Supreme Controller, Jiva, the Living Entity, and Prakriti, Material Nature. At Matatva, we'll invite a devotee, please read for us. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, may I? Please. At Matatva. The Lord now concludes the chapter of instruction on the immutable spirit soul. In describing the immortal soul in various ways, Lord Krishna establishes that the soul is immortal and the body is temporary. Therefore, Arjuna as a Kshatriya should not abandon this duty out of fear that his grandfather and teacher, Deshi and Drona, will die in the battle. 2.30 Okay, so we're coming back to the second chapter, and this is text number 30. This is where, as, as Prabhupada mentions here, concludes, Krishna is concluding his instruction on the immutable spirit soul. Right, this is, this is it's right at the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna really doesn't get into it again. It's a very basic point the eternal nature of the soul. So Lord Krishna explained to Arjuna, the body is temporary and the soul is eternal. So why should Arjuna lament? Bhishma and Drona, they're not going to die, well, they'll just change their bodies. He shouldn't give up his duty out of fear. All right, so this, that's Atma Tattva, the, sign, the, the, the knowledge of the spirit soul. This is, this is a very common, very basic knowledge, but for ordinary people, common men, the ordinary person in the street, they don't know this. They never think about it. Because most people are just conditioned souls and they're on the platform of animal existence. All they think about is eating, sleeping, mating, defending. And to do these things they want money and they, they'll work, they'll do all kinds of horrible things to get money so that they can eat, sleep, mate and defend. They don't understand the nature of the soul. So this is confidential knowledge actually. This is what Bhagavad Gita calls this confidential knowledge, understanding our spiritual nature. 
because mo for most people, they cannot appreciate it. They're lost. Go ahead, Maharaji, keep reading. Oh, Prabhu, Prabhu was reading. Avinashi Krutad Vidhiyena Sarvam Idam Tatam That which pervades the entire body, you should know to be indestructible. Bhagavad Gita 2.17. So, what is pervading the entire body? What is it that's pervading the entire body? Soul. Well, the soul, the soul is in one place, right? What is it that's pervading the entire body? Consciousness, then. Yes, consciousness, right? Consciousness, right? The consciousness is this. Consciousness is the symptom of the soul. We would describe consciousness like that as a symptom of the soul. People often ask us, how do you know there's a soul, we say, by consciousness. And just as the sun is in one place in the sky, but the sunlight is spread everywhere, in the same way the soul is in one place in the body, but the consciousness is spread throughout the body. Someone stands on our toe, we feel it, because we have consciousness there in, the, in, the, in our toe. Or someone pulls your hair, you feel it because you have some consciousness there. So that consciousness is spread throughout the body. But we only know, of course, about our own body. So, someone can read, please. May I read, Maharaj? Yes. Atma Tattva, this is practical, formally, all the verses, they were more or less theoretical. Dehi nosmin yatha dehe kaumaram yavvadam jara. This may be taken theoretical. Less intelligent cannot understand that there is a soul within this body. But here it is explained very clearly. Avinashi to tadvidhi tat. That thing which is spread all over the body. Avinashi to tadvidhi tat. That avinashi is imperishable. So what is spread all over the body? Consciousness. Bhagavad Gita 2.17, London, August 23rd, 1973. So Prabh Prabhupada said, this is practical. The other verses, formerly all the verses, they were more or less theoretical. But this is practical. Sometimes people argue, oh, they, they say, oh, this is Hindu, this is Hindu. But Prabhupada said, no, this is for everybody. Everyone is a soul. Everyone is living in a material body. Everyone's body changes from child to youth to old age. It's for everyone. It's not just for Hindus. This knowledge is for everyone. People are so biased and piggity sometimes, they cannot understand these things. So less intelligent people cannot understand there's a soul in the body. What, what they, just like Prabhupada went to Moscow and he met with the one professor, Kotovsky, in Moscow. He was a professor of Asian studies and uh, he was saying to Prabhupada, he said, Oh Swamiji, at the time of death everything is finished. So he didn't know anything. He didn't know anything. He could not understand about the soul. Although he was a professor of Asian studies, didn't know anything. So here in the Bhagavad Gita, it's explained very clearly. And then Prabhupada starts talking about consciousness. It's imperishable and spread all over the body. Go ahead. Someone read. Please. 
atma tattva any layman can understand that the material body minus consciousness is a dead body and this consciousness cannot be revived in the body by any means of material administration therefore consciousness is not due to any amount of material combination but to the spirit soul 2.17 purport all right so what's the difference between a living body and the dead body Manaji, you just read? Uh, in, yeah, material body is without consciousness, is with consciousness, but the dead body, in that body there is no consciousness. Because we are moving, that means we are, that we are having some consciousness in us. But when we are dead, then uh, there is no consciousness, we can't do any kind of activity. Why is there no consciousness? Because soul is not there at that time, right. when you are dead. If you just simply say no consciousness, well, people think, well, you know, I'm unconscious, you know. They give me an injection, they made me unconscious. So what about that? You know, they do a surgical operation, they give you an injection, and then you go, un you're unconscious. Is the soul, is a, is the soul still yes, there? Soul is there at that time, but... <laughs> Just like when we are sleeping at the time we are sleeping, there is a consciousness means uh, it's a temporary, you can say that uh, uh, when we are dead, so there is no uh, permanent, uh, means there is no kind of soul and consciousness, but when we are sleeping, just like or someone gave us any kind of injection, we are unconscious at that time, uh, but soul is there that is moving from one place to another. Means we are temporarily dead, we can see at that time. Really? <laughs> Temporary dead? <laughs> interesting expression. <laughs> uh, okay, um, Prabhupada went to, uh, when Prabhupada was in Boston, in the beginning of our movement, Prabhupada was, it was arranged, Prabhupada went to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. You know, very prestigious institute, scientific institute, and Prabhupada gave lecture there, and he asked him, what is the difference between a living body and a dead body? And actually he said nobody could properly explain. They were saying something, but they were not giving proper explanations. None of them knew about the soul, the concept of a soul within the body. So they, they gave some other thing, that the heart stops or the, there's no, uh, the consciousness is dead. We have to understand, as Prabhupada says here, consciousness is not due to any amount of material combination, right? So Prabhupada is referring to the concept that the origin of life, where does life come from, right? Now somebody, the materialists, the scientists, they often promote that life comes from, from what? What do the materialists? From chemicals. From chemicals. Chem right. From and then what do we say? From life. Life comes from life. So, how can we prove that life doesn't come from chemicals? Prabhupada usually uh, told to them to take, uh, if I give you the elements, can you uh, make, can you make the life? If I, give, if, I, elements, if, life? if I give you the chemicals, can you make life? Can you create life? And they will say, well, in the future, Give me time. And what will you say? Kirtida, what will you say? I'm saying in the future we'll do it. Just give us time. It took time for us to make airplanes. It took, it took time for us to get satellite TV. You have to give us more time. Look, we've already got test tube babies. 
The man doesn't even have to penetrate the womb of the wife. They just simply inject something into the womb and she can have a baby. So, what do you say? Ramna Shringa, what do you say? That's true, baby comes from life, Maharaj. Whatever they injected is life. I think uh, life comes from life and it would never be proven that it comes from chemical. But I'm saying... It now is actually a far away in the future from when they were asking when they were saying this. It is 40 years, 50 years already and they have not come any way close to create life from life. Whatever, whatever life they think they're creating is actually coming from another source of life so far. What do you mean coming from another source of life? Give some detail. What do they, what do they inject into uh, the test tube baby? The source of life. They're taking the semen from man to inject. It's not a chemical they're, 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 they're instituting in there. Yes. But they will say, you just give us more time, we're going to do it in the future. It takes, it took us a long time to get, you know, just to build, to develop the wheel. And then we had bicycles, and then we had motor cars, and now we have airplanes and satellites. But, not, but none of these things are life. Their matter is just put together. None of these things is airplane, motorcycle, and the wheels, they are not, none of them has life. Their mechanism put together to do some work is a machine. Mm. And we're, we're producing more and more crops than ever. Our land is more and more productive. We're able to grow more and more food. But how is it the crop? The crop is life. It comes from life. They have not produced crop by combination of a few chemical uh, matters. They did not do that. Crop was coming from crop. And also our scriptures telling uh, that these crops are coming from the rain. But we're the scientists, we're, we're developing better crops. We've got genetically modified crops now. Yes, they're doing that. But that doesn't mean uh, they're creating life. They're, they're manipulating life, I would say. <laughs> they're not creating life. With the creation of, the, of, of their um, of their new uh, genetically modified crops, they're they're just doing something to what is there already. Well, give us time. Just give us time. You, you already have fifty years, so we'll be waiting since you asked the question. So let's see in the future. I don't think it is possible. Yeah. <laughs> what what's the example Prabhupada gives? I think that is a perfect question, perfect answer. I'm trying to remember picking up Prabhupada give an example there. Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada talks about Yes, anybody else know what answer does Prabhupada give? When people are saying give us more time? Prabhupada would always say they are simply rascals. <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada said this is like the man who has no money, but he's going to give a post-dated check. Today I'm poor man, I have nothing, but I'll give you a post-dated check, check for $10 million. In the future you can cash it. Just be patient. Right? The scientist is like that. He's giving the post-dated check. He's saying, in the future we will do it. Just give us more time. We have already synthesized DNA and RNA. We have done so much. We have done so much for the development of the, the, the life of people. Just give us more time and we will also create life. They talk like that. So Prabhupada said post-dated check. Now, today you're a poor man, as Ramana Shingha said, nothing they can create, 
No life they can create. But they're saying, in the future, we will do it. In the future, Prabhupada would say, give me one egg, one grain of rice in the laboratory. Can you make one grain of rice? Can you produce one egg? He said, chicken is better scientist than you. And so life comes from life. And there has to be the presence of the soul, the spirit has to be, the spirit soul has to be there to give the life. Without that, then useless. So it's a very important point in our preaching to present the nature of life. People in general are very ignorant about the nature of life. They cannot understand how there's a soul within the body. And without the soul, when the soul leaves the body, then there's no life anymore. And when the soul leaves the body, that means the consciousness is gone. Okay, I will go ahead. Nahanyate hanyamane sharere. Right, this is text number 20. Najayate mriyate vakidachin nayambutva bhavitava nabuya. Ajonit yam shesvato yam purano nahanyate hanyamani sharire. It is not destroyed when the body is destroyed. Our body is going to be destroyed one day, but the soul cannot be destroyed. Right? What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? Different weapons you can use, try to use to destroy the soul. You may use weapons of fire, or water, or rain, or wind. Nothing can destroy the soul. Cannot be cut by any weapon, cannot be moistened by water, cannot be withered by the wind. Because the soul is not material. The soul is spiritual. Of course, people will say, why can't we see the soul? We say, well, it's spiritual, it's not material. You have to have spiritual vision to see it. Then you can see the soul. Without spiritual vision, you'll never see. Deha antara prapti. The body, another, achieved. So, text number eight, text number 13 is describing, text number 13 describing how the soul leaves the body and we take another body. We have to give up one body, but it's okay, we'll get another body. Text number, this is quoting from chapter 15. So we're going up to, away up to chapter 15 because up in chapter 15 they're also bringing up again this point about how the living entity takes another body. Text number 15 it says, Vayur Gandan Ivasayat. The living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas. Thus he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another. So just as the air, you're, there you can see the man is at the beach, at the seaside, he's enjoying the sea air. So when he goes back to the city again, it's a different air, a different conception of life. Here we can see the man and the different senses, the eye, the ear, the sense of touch, the tongue, and the nose. So, five knowledge acquiring senses grouped around the mind. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text number 9. The five knowledge acquiring senses are the five, here you can see, 
mentioning the sense objects, the process of transmigration. Text number nine. Someone read, please. Some Prabhu can read. Go ahead, read. Some man read. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, may I? Yes. Srotam chapshu sparshanam cha rasanam grahanam eva cha adhishthaya manasa chaya vishyan upaseva se The living entity, thus taking another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose, and sense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text 9. Okay. Can you give some examples of different living entities, how they enjoy a particular set of sense objects? I'll give you one. Just like the fish. Is, right? Which sense object is that enjoying? To I. Huh? They use their eyes. Yeah, but what did what do they enjoy with? The tongue? Yes. Right. With the tongue. Right? When people go fishing, they want to catch the fish, they will put the worm there, right? On the hook. And the fish comes along and he sees the worm, he wants to eat the worm, he gets caught on the hook. So the his tongue is conquered by the sense object. Right? Uh, can you give another example like that? A different sense object? Moss? Yes. What happens? With the eyes. They see the light and they go to the light and they get burnt. Right. Yes. The moth goes into the fire, burned. Someone else? Another one? Maharaj, uh, Zirafi also with the tongue. He eats the leaves with the um, thorns and then so he feels like, you know, he, when he, when the Zirafi gets the blood out of it and then he enjoys the taste. Yeah, that's, you, we say camels usually more than giraffe. The camel, okay, okay. The nice. camel. Yeah, the camel will eat the thorns and taste its own blood and think, Enjoyment. Yes? Some other example? Dear Guru Maharaj, yes. after they hear the music, then they stop. They yeah. stand still. Yeah, the deer. Hearing. Thank you. The deer hears the sound. Someone's playing the flute, becomes captivated by the sound of the flute, and the deer becomes stunned, and the hunter comes and kills the deer. Good. Another one? Elephant eyes. Like if was somebody want to catch an elephant, they uh, they saw him the she elephant. Then he run and fall into the well, hole. That's us, made for him. Usually it's not the eye, it's more the smell. That the male elephant can smell the female elephant. Yes, Some, yes. Something like dog. Just like the dog will smell the female dog. So the elephant, the male elephant, could, he picks up the smell of the female elephant. And he comes running towards the female elephant. And in this way he's caught. So the nose. So we can see these different senses, how they give us problems. And we have all the senses active in our body. We see also the, the eyes, uh, the, the bird, the, some birds like the vulture, they can be very high up in the sky, but they will see a dead body. They will, they will immediately come down to eat the dead body. So they use their eyes like that to find out the dead body, where is their food. So different senses giving us problems. So this is 
the process of transmigration, archana yuri. Yes, um, process of uh, transmigration. One's uh, plates in some particular kind of body, he comes under the control of nature because of, because the body being met uh, acts according to the law of nature. At that time, the living entity has no power to change. The law, right? It has no power to change the law. Who are we to change the law? So we are under the control of the law. What's the law? The law of nature. The control of nature. And the laws of nature place us into a particular kind of body. It's laws material nature and we're under these laws there's no way we can escape them just like you live in a country say you live in india then they have certain laws in india you, if you want to you can't change the law you can change your country go to another country go to another place but you can't change the law go ahead archana keep reading Suppose as NT is put into the body of a dog, as soon as he is put into the body of a dog, he must act like a dog. He cannot act otherwise. And if the living entity is put in the body of a honk, uh, then he is forced to act, uh, to eat stool and act like a honk. Yeah, sometimes uh, I saw one man, he, he had a dog. It, 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 put, it got this little dog and the little dog, uh, he, he wanted to put the leash and collar around the dog, but the dog didn't like it at all. The dog was so upset, would get so upset whenever he put the leash and tied the dog up. The dog would get so upset with just a little dog. I could understand something that the dog had some consciousness from previous life. Maybe previously he'd been a person or something, now he'd become a dog. And so he's put into the body of a dog, he has to act like a dog. And the same way Prabhupada said, you put into the hog, you become a hog, you eat stool. This is, this is the law of material nature. There's nothing we can do about it. So we have to be very careful, very conscious. Okay, that's Prabhupada quote, that we're quoting from the 13th chapter there, about being put into the body of a hog. Go ahead. Okay. Bhagavad Gita. Someone read for us. Ramna Shringa Prabhu, you can read this. Janma Karma, Chami Devyam, 4, uh, Bhagavad 4, 9. Guni me vipi tani, Janmani tonchar karjuna, tani aham vera sarvani nathum vittaha paran tapaha. Many, many births, both you and I, passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. O subdure of the enemy. Bhagavad Gita 4.5. Thank you. Thank you. So, 
going back, going back to the fourth chapter, Arjuna had asked Krishna. Remember the question? Who remembers? What did Arjuna ask Krishna? And Krishna replied in this way. What was Arjuna's question? Saki Harini. Um, it was regarding how um, he gave the knowledge to Sun God, and he was Krishna is with Arjuna, so he was asking how come, you know, the knowledge was given to him while Krishna is born with Arjuna at the same time. Yeah, the Sun God is senior, right? So much older than you. Krishna and Arjuna are the same age, but the Sun God is so much older. Arjuna said, Sun God is senior by birth to you. How could you give the knowledge to him? And so then Lord Krishna quoted this verse, chapter 4, text number 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Lord Krishna is saying, many births, we have passed. I remember them, but you don't, we, you cannot. We don't remember our previous births, but Lord Krishna remembers everything. So therefore, at the top of the slide, we said, Janma Karma Chame Divyam, meaning the birth and the activities are all transcendental. Lord Krishna's birth and activities are not of this material world. And you can see in the picture, Lord Krishna's appearing in the prison house of Kamsa to Vasudeva and Devaki. And he's appearing in his forearm form, fully dressed and decorated before Vasudeva and Devaki. He's come as their son. So, very important to understand Lord Krishna's transcendental nature. So fourth chapter gives us this, these statements that we have to understand Lord's birth is not like our birth. The living entity forgets everything due to his change of body, but the Lord remembers because he does not change his Satchitananda body, right? Satchitananda body means eternal, blissful and full of knowledge. The spirit, the spirit soul's nature is Satchitananda. And Lord Krishna has a fully spiritual body. There's no difference between his body and his soul. It's all Satchitananda. So we have to understand these points. Everything uh, everyone, everything. Sanji, there's one doubt. Sorry? Right, so, the, as it is written, like, living entity forgets everything due to change of body. Yeah. Generally it happens, but like, uh, as, as we see in Bhagavatam, there are many characters who remember their past life. What was they in their past life, how did they perform the work and they remember the things. Like Bharat Maharaj, he became a deer, uh, he became like he takes three births, so he remembers all of his three births. Yes. So they remember the past life. Yeah, some very rare, very rare. Why don't we? In devotional service, there are many. Why don't we remember our past lives? Prabhu Maharaj, that is what I am asking. If my question is this. Why we don't? Why we don't? We, we couldn't bear it. It would be so embarrassing for us to remember that in our past life I was a pig or I was a dog. Now I've come to this human form of life. So Lord Krishna arranges anyway, it's arranged to take away the remembrance of our past life so that we can enjoy better in this life. If we had the memory of the previous life, then it would, have, it would restrict our enjoyment in this life. And we've all come here to enjoy, 
we all have that tendency that we want to enjoy this world. So it's arranged to take away the memory of the previous life, then we can enjoy more. Just like the super soul is described in the 15th chapter, this super soul, from the super soul comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. Krishna allows us to forget. Why? So we can enjoy more. And Prabhupada gives the example, he said, just like if you're in a drama, do any of you act? Do you take part in dramas? I know that New Delhi Temple, they do wonderful dramas. They have some nice devotees there who organize dramas. And Radha Gopinath Temple, they also do dramas. They're also very active in dramas. So uh, when you forget who you are and when you really enter into the part, then you act the best. But if you're still thinking, or who I, I'm a brahmachari or I'm a sannyasi and you're trying to play the part of somebody, then you won't be very good. You have to really forget to play the role nicely. So the same way we've come to this material world to, pr to play different roles. Someone's a husband, someone's a wife, someone's a mother, someone's a father, someone's a teacher, someone's a worker. You know, we're playing all these different roles. But actually, it's, not, it, the, it's, it's just a drama. They're all different roles in the drama. Eternally, we're all spirit souls. But so that we can enter into that drama, we forget our spiritual nature. All right? Someone please read this. Manage. Maharaj, can I ask one question? Yes. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Um, Maharaj, like uh, sometimes we sometimes we come to know that uh, there are certain people who remember their past lives. So how is that? Why is it some people? Sometimes we like we, yes. Your voice is breaking. I'm not able to hear clearly. Uh, Maharaj, sometimes we hear that uh, certain people are there to remember their past lives also. So how is it possible that they remember it? How is it possible some people can remember their past life? Yes, Maharaj. Well, the researchers on this topic find that usually what happens is you get some children who remember their past life for some time. When they're young, when they're young children, like four or five years old, they will remember something about their family, or my husband, or my children. And we find that, you know, that they actually have memories of their past life. So, as they grow up, the memories are forgotten. They, they lose these memories. It just fades away. Okay. And you, it's generally, it's like young children, you know, they, they sometimes, not always, but some children, they have these memories of their past lives. But as they grow up, it's forgotten. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. How does it happen? How did they get these memories? We don't know. It's not very clear. We, we, but somehow, some, some people have these memories from their past life. Somehow it comes. Maybe by the grace of the super soul. Does it mean very much? Does it mean very much? To remember your past. Now, if you remembered in your past life, you know you were living in another village somewhere, and you had a you had a family, and then you had a you had a an old husband, 
or maybe you were even a man and you had a wife like that, you know, would it, would it make much difference to your life? It would simply confuse you. You'd become confused. What to do? Who am I? So, so that we can enjoy this life, Krishna arranges that we don't remember. And it makes it easier for us to live in this particular body, in this lifetime. At the same time, we're encouraged to be thoughtful and understand that we are souls, we are eternal spiritual beings, and we are changing bodies. And we'll keep changing, taking birth and dying in different situations. And we should want to get out of this, this condition, because it's not very pleasant. Taking birth is not pleasant. Dying is not pleasant. There's so many miseries, particularly in this Kali Yuga. It's a time of suffering. The whole Kali Yuga is just a mood of suffering from beginning to end. So we shouldn't want to come back to this material world. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, it's a temporary place of misery. So we should want to get out of this world. All right. Read some more. Yes, my God. Thank you. Read more. Go ahead. Manages, please. One of you. Yes. Although the Lord appears on schedule namely at the end of the Dvapara Yuga of the 28th millennium of the seventh mana in one day of Brahma. He has no obligation to adhere to such rules and regulations because he is completely free to act in many ways at his will. 4.7 purpose. Yeah, 4.7. Again, this describing the appearance of Lord Krishna. When does he appear? Well, mentioned here, on schedule. He has his schedule. Just like, you know, some businessman or some big politician or a royal, royalty, they have their schedule. Go here, go there. And so the Lord also appears at the end of the Dwapara Yuga, the 28th millennium of the seventh Manu, one day of Brahma. So the Lord comes one day of Brahma, as the Supreme Lord himself comes once in one day of Brahma. But he has no obligation to follow this. He can come as he likes. Just like sometimes you get emergency incarnations of the Lord. Just like Lord Buddha, because of degradation of the Brahmins, Lord Buddha came to lead people away from the Vedas. It was an, an emergency situation. So sometimes the Lord comes with out of schedule, but generally he follows the schedule. All right, we need somebody to chant this verse. Yes. Ajupi san avyayatma, Bhuta nam ishvaro pisan, Prakritim svamadishtaya, Sambhavami atma mayaya. Oh, your Sanskrit is very good, very nice. Go ahead, read English. Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all living entities, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Bhagavad Gita 4.6. Yeah. So, Lord Krishna is describing his appearance. It's confusing. The Lord said, I'm unborn, but he takes birth. I'm, he's unborn. Someone said to me one time, I was distributing Prabhupada's books one time, and someone said to me, I know Krishna cannot be God. 
he takes birth. He has a mother and father. So what would you say to such a person? Maharaji. Um, I think like the verse says, it is to, it, although he is, uh, he takes birth, it's, it's a transcendental body, it's not the material body like ours. So, how does he take birth? It's not, uh, it's not an ordinary birth, even when we see Krishna's birth in the jail, he was, the, the activities that surrounded Krishna's birth were not ordinary. Okay. Was, was, there, was the conception ordinary? No. Yes? You know something? No, it wasn't ordinary, right? What happened? No, Maharaj. What? She first appeared in the heart or in the mind, was there? My second was ordinary. I'm not able to hear what any of you are saying. Your voices are breaking. I don't know. Is it only me who is hearing like this? No worries. Everyone, I'm not just having a Uh-huh. Anyway, in Prabhupada's purport, Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, uh, just like you can see here, he said, Lord says, I still... Sorry? Maharaj, is that true? Mahamaya, Lord Krishna, take birth? Mahamaya? Is it Mahamaya that Lord Krishna takes birth? And yes, Maharaj. Mm. Oh, the Lord. Yes. yes? Isn't it that? Krishna do not think about it. He made his appearance? Yes, right. Yes. He made his appearance. But how does he appear? What's the example Prabhupada gives? By by his own will, he is not supposed to be appear. Not different from us. Can no. we say that? Well, no, there's another point. Prabhupada gives an example about how the Lord appears. He says, just like the sun appears. Just as the sun appears. You know, it's not like the sun is taking birth. The sun is appearing every morning. It's not like a new sun, the sun is just taking birth. In the same way when Lord Krishna, he appears in this world. He, he's, he, he's, uh, he's actually everywhere, he's present everywhere in everything. But he's not manifest. But then at particular times and for the pleasure of his devotees, then he will appear, he'll manifest himself. So he, he, he appears, his appear, just like the sun rises at the proper time in the day, in the morning, dawn, we see the sunrise at that time. And we see the sunset in the evening. So the same way the Lord appears in this world. And then the Lord also finishes his pastimes and he leaves this world. He is no longer manifest no longer visible to everyone. So he appears in a, his transcendental body, not under the modes of nature. And his conception is also not ordinary, that he appeared in the heart of Vasudev, and from the heart of Vasudev, he was transferred into the heart of Devaki. And then from the heart of Devaki, he entered into the womb of Devaki, and then he appeared and he was in the womb of Devaki for some time. And we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 
how the demigods would come and offer prayers to Lord Krishna who was within the womb of Devaki. And at the particular time, it came time for his appearance, the Lord manifested himself. And of course his birth is also not ordinary, but he appears, as we see in the illustration, fully dressed and decorated with a flower garland and carrying the four symbols of Lord Vishnu. So he appears, just like the sun appears in the sky. Okay? So, going ahead. Jnana. Shitra Shitra Knayor Jnanam. To understand this body and its knower. Right? You, you'll notice that we're presenting the Bhagavad Gita according to topics. We're not going verse by verse, we're going by topics. So this section is actually coming from chapter 13. Yachtaj Gyanam Matam Mama. This is called knowledge. That is my opinion. To understand this body and its snore is called knowledge. That is my opinion. So people often ask us, what is knowledge? You may want to tell them, what is, the un what is our understanding? What is knowledge? So it's described here, chapter 13, verse number 3. To understand this body, this body is called Shetra. Shetra, Shetra means the field, because the body is the field of our activities. Just like if you're a farmer, you have some land, you have a field, so you, you use the land to perform your activities, to grow your crops, to grow your vegetables, whatever you're growing. You use that land, that's the Shetra. And the Shetragna, Tragna, Shetragna means the knower of the field. So you have the field, which is the body, and the Shetragna, the knower of the field. Who is the knower of the field? Who is the knower in the body? Someone's super soul. Huh? The super soul? And so, so and the super soul. Yeah, there are two knowers. There are two knowers. Yes, there are two knowers. There's the soul and there's the super soul. So to understand this body and its knower is called knowledge. That is my opinion, Lord Krishna said. Very important knowledge. This is very basic confidential knowledge. We have to get this right. We have to get it very clear. So, Lord Krishna is explaining to Arjuna here, to understand the body and its snore, this is knowledge. That is my opinion, Lord Krishna says. Okay. Ishwara. Ishwara means the Supreme Controller. Ishwara is also Shetragna. Shetragna meaning the knower of the field. Lord Krishna is Ishwara. He is the supreme knower. He knows everything, right? He doesn't know just only one field or just only his body. He knows everything. But the Jiva is different from the Ishwara. The Jiva, he is Shetragna also. He's also the knower, but he's the individual knower. So there's a big difference, the supreme knower and the individual knower. As Kirti Dhammadaji said, there are two knowers. There is the, the living entity and the super soul. The living entity is the jiva and the super soul, the Ishwara. The super soul is actually the expansion of the Ishwara. And then Prakriti. Prakriti meaning? Archana, what's the meaning? Prakriti? 
energy of the Lord, the um, material creation. Yes, the nature. We say nature, mat nature. material nature, prakriti. So it's, there's uh, there's the the controller. There's Krishna as the Ishwara, the supreme controller, and the material nature, which is controlled under his control. Right, material nature. Chemicals, matter, are all prakriti. And living entities, the jiva, we are also a type of prakriti, but we are superior prakriti. Here in this case we're talking about dull matter, right? The material energy, prakriti, or we could say, using this language, we could say the shetra, shetra, field, the material energy. Maybe you know Krishna Shetra Swami, very nice spiritual leader in our Krishna consciousness movement, Krishna Shetra Swami. So Shetra, field, Krishna Shetra, his field, the field of Krishna. So Krishna's field, everybody, every living, everything, it's all Krishna's. So these three topics have to be understood. Ishwara, the Jiva and Prakriti. Right? Bhagavad Gita is actually concerned with five topics. Do you remember in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita? Five topics are described in the Bhagavad Gita. Who remembers? I am Maharaj. Yes, tell me. Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, Karma and the time, oh. Kala. Yes, very good, yes. And which one is not eternal? Karma, Karma is not eternal. Good. All right. Archana, read. Jnana. My knowledge may be limited, Krishna's knowledge unlimited, complete, but both of us, we are knower, we can understand, we can know, therefore we are called Kachetra. Shetragna, Shetragna. Shetragna, yeah. But the difference is Krishna knows everything all over the creation. I even do not know what is going on in my body. That is the difference. Bhagavad Gita 13.3. Hari, August 11, 1973. All right. So my knowledge may be limited. Certainly a lot of things we don't know. Even we may be very big scholar, very big professor, so many things we don't know. But Krishna's knowledge, that is complete. He knows everything. Hmm. Both of us, both Krishna and us, we are knower. We can understand, we can know. Therefore we are called Shetragna. Shetragna meaning the knower of the field and the, no the field will be different for different people. Just like my field, my body, and your field, your body. But the difference is Krishna knows everything all over the creation. Krish because Krish this whole creation is like Krishna's body, just like we see the universal form, the Vishwarup. It's Krishna's body. So Krishna knows everything. Prabhupada said, I even do not know what is going on in my body. <laughs> right? We, we, are, we, are, we don't understand sometimes what's happening in our body. We don't understand sometimes what's happening. Why, why I've got this headache? Why I've got this pain? 
why I've got this problem with my body. So many things we don't know, even though we're in this body, we don't know about the body. That is the difference. Krishna knows everything. We know a little bit, not much. All right? Somebody can read this for us? A Prabhu. Let's have a Prabhu read. Who hasn't read yet? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, please read. Nana. Shall I go? Okay. Are you reading Prabhu or I should read? Kuhan Prabhu? Uh, Prabhu, uh, you can go ahead, Prabhu. A citizen may know everything about his patch of land, but the king knows not only his palace, but all the properties possessed by the individual citizens. Similarly, one may be the proprietor of the body individually, but the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of all bodies. Oh, all right. You can see the drawing on the right side of the slide. The king is looking over all the kingdom. So the king knows everything about the land, his kingdom. He doesn't only know about his palace, but he knows about all the properties which are owned by the people in his kingdom, the citizens. In the same way, we are the proprietor of our body, but Krishna is the proprietor of all bodies. We know about our own pain and pleasure, but Krishna knows about everyone's pain and pleasure. So sometimes when we have difficulties, we're thinking, oh, I have to tell Krishna my problem. You don't have to tell Krishna your problem. Krishna knows. Krishna knows everyone's problems. It's not a very good idea that we have to tell Krishna all of our problems. Oh, Krishna, you know, I need this. Oh, Krishna, give me, you know, that happened. Oh, Krishna. Krishna knows everything. What we need to tell Krishna is how much we value his service then how much we love him and how much we want to serve him. That's what Krishna likes to hear. He doesn't like to hear all of our problems. <laughs> so, this is the point. Understanding the difference between the living entity and the Supreme Lord. Our knowledge is very limited. Yes? Prabhu, another Prabhu, read this. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, let me try. Jnana, the king is the original proprietor of the kingdom and the citizen is the secondary proprietor. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is the supreme proprietor of all bodies. Purport 13.3. Okay. 13th chapter. Hare Krishna So, just like you may live in an apartment, you may rent it, right? The landlord, he knows about all of his apartments. We only know about the one apartment we're living in. We're only renting one apartment. But the landlord, he knows about all the apartments. In the same way, Lord Krishna, he's the proprietor of all the bodies. He knows about everything going on in everyone's body. So we have to understand the relationship here, the difference. Prabhupada explains. Prabhu can read. Jnana. The Setra Jnana means the possessor of this Setra body, the owner of or occupier. So you, me and every one of us, we are occupying each one body. I have no business with your body, but Krishna has got business with your body, my body, his body, everyone's body. Therefore Krishna says, Setra Jnana Chapi Maam Vidhi. Shetra, jam, shet, shetra Kyam Chapi Mam Vidhi. 
Krishna said, I am the knower in all bodies. Right? We know about our own body. That's enough for us. Take care of our own body. Right? Just take, taking care of our own body is enough problems. But Krishna is taking care of all the bodies. He's got business with your body, my body, his body, everyone's body. So just imagine how busy Krishna is. Prabhupada said one time, just imagine how busy Krishna must be. He's in everyone's heart. He's knowing about everyone, everyone's situation. But sometimes we think, oh, Krishna must have forgotten me. Krishna forgot about me. No. Krishna is, of course, very busy. It doesn't mean he's, forgot, he's forgotten anyone. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. Somebody, you can read more. Yana, just like a landlord, he has got many houses. The occupier is there. He is concerned with that apartment or the house he is occupying. But the landlord has concern with so many houses. Similarly, this body, I am the occupier. God has given me this body, this machine, but proprietor is the Lord, the Supreme Lord. Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 7, Text 3, London, March 11, 1975. Thank you. Okay. So, but very powerful preaching point. Understanding how the Lord is situated in the heart of everyone. Of course, some people, there are two philosophies, main philosophies. We have Dvaita and Advaita. Dvaita means dualism and Advaita means monism. So the monists, they say there's only one soul. And the dualists, the Dvaitas, they say two souls. There's the super soul and the living entity. But the monists, they will say, there's only the one soul. And they, so they, they say like that. They say, there's only the super soul. Only, and, and we are all, the, so they say like that, that we are all Brahman, we are all God, you know, like this, this, I, this is the idea. So the monist philosophy, their, their thinking is different from the Vaishnava philosophy. The Vaishnavas, they understand their two souls. One is the master and one is the servant. Just like there is Ishwara and there is Prakriti. Right? So Ishwara is the master and Prakriti means to be the servant. So the living entities, we are Prakriti. We are also Prakriti. We are superior Prakriti to the matter, but we are also Prakriti. That's described in seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna describes about the Prakriti, right? First of all, he says, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. These eight are my separated energies. But then he says, beside this, there's another, which are living entities. All living entities. So, uh, superior Prakriti. We are superior. We are superior. Why, why are the living entities superior to dumb matter? Can anyone say? Maharaj, because uh, matter comes into uh, consciousness when the soul enters into that dull matter. So that uh, soul is the living force, which when enters into the matter, the matter comes into action. Otherwise that matter is of no use. Well, I wouldn't say of no use. It's also Krishna's energy. We have to know how to use matter. Right? Okay. Yes. Yes. There's consciousness in the living entity. So the living entity is superior to the dull matter. The dull matter, the table, the car, the house, dull matter. But the living entity Superior matter, superior prakriti, because we have consciousness. 
Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I have a question. You were explaining. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. The more is. Oh, go ahead, of course, Prabhu. Then I'll, I'll ask my question afterward. Yeah, yeah, Prabhu, please go ahead. Then I'll ask later. So, Maharaj, you were explaining um, the more is. Um, uh, theory of the one soul, the super soul. Is that the exact uh, of, of philosophy the Christians and the Muslim uh, they accept it or is, there, or is there something different with their idea of, of what the soul is in the body? Christ, Christians and Muslim and uh, yes, well they do speak about God, the soul, they understand, you know, that we're, we're souls, we're not, some, but it's not a point which they really emphasize on. Because, you, you know, like in Christianity, they will often say, well, sometimes they will say that the soul in the animal is different from the soul in the human. So they have this, this and, and this, and this way they justify meat eating. They say the animal souls are different from the human souls. So they don't, you know, they they have a very limited understanding about what it means to be a soul. They simply speak about love of God and time of death, one birth, one life. You only get one life, and either you get heaven or hell forever. Either you're cast, you get live, you can go to heaven and live there forever, or you go to hell and reside there forever. No chance of ever getting out, getting free. So that's their idea. So to try to talk to them about you know the soul and the super soul, you know, it, it's not something they're quite ready for because. They have to understand a little more about the nature of the soul and how all living entities are souls. But they do speak about the Lord in the heart, certainly. They understand uh, they understand and, and as far as the Muslim philosophy goes, there's a lot in comparison to the Bhagavad Gita, that their Quran has many points which are very similar to the Bhagavad Gita. But generally they, they will just speak about, you know, pray, to, their, their process of course is prayer, to pray to God and they will pray like six, five, six times a day. And with Christianity their focus is more on just simply love God love God and how to, how to love God. They never speak about service, to, how to serve God, but they speak about love God, that we should have love for God. I mean, they, they, do, they do have some kind, sometimes they do engage in humanitarian work. You see like Mother Teresa doing a lot of humanitarian work there when she was alive in Calcutta, feeding the poor, taking care of the homeless and so on seeing them all as children of God. But uh, as far as an actual philosophical understanding about the soul and the super soul, it's not something which really comes up. One time Tamal Krishna Maharaj went to meet uh, a very senior member of the Catholic Church in the Philippines. In the Philippines there was a cardinal, someone, his name was Cardinal Sin, actually. And so Tamal Krishna Maharaj went to see Cardinal Sin and he had a number of questions to ask him about the Catholic philosophy. And he would ask him, you know, about what is their concept of God and what is God doing and how, how do they see the life in God, the kingdom of God. But he would simply say, Oh, this is not in our theology. This is not, this does not come up in our theology. So they, they don't comment, they can't, they can't comment on these things. Thank you, Mark. If, 
That's why it is said you, you want to understand God, you have to go to India where you get the, the real science of God that is there in the ancient scriptures of India. The Catholic Church and uh, the Christian Church and the Mohammedan religion and so on. It's a more modern concept of approach to God. Prabhupada calls it religion for the meat eaters in the in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay. So we're talking about Jnana, Ishwara and Jiva. Were there any more questions before we go on? Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. It yeah. was uh, May supposed to ask question. Yeah. Maharaj, my question is uh, regarding the previous slide. If um, Krishna residing as a super soul in individual bodies, and then he, he knows everything within and without, but how is that, Maharaj, like uh, why we have to pray even for the material benefits? Or in most cases, devotees, we pray for the spiritual, day, like you know, someone is seriously sick in case of last month with the um, Prabhu, that uh, we, many devotees prayed and then they yeah, wanted uh, him to come back. If Krishna knows everything, then what's the point of the, how we got this tendency of praying? in both material and spiritual uh, desires. Well, I, d I did mention that actually it's not necessary, that we don't have to tell Krishna, we don't have to remind Krishna all these things, because Krishna does know. What we do have to do, we have to tell Krishna that we want to serve him, and we want, we, that, that, uh, we want to develop our love for him. That's how, what we should be praying for. The, there was one man came to Prabhupada and he was a Christian missionary and he came to Prabhupada in the 1960s there in New York and he was asking Prabhupada, he said, what to pray for? He said, what to pray for? He said, this is bewildering me, this is my puzzle. I cannot understand what we should be praying for. But to Prabhupada it was very clear what we should pray for. He said we should simply pray that, O oh, Supreme Lord, please engage me in your service. That should be the prayer of the devotee. And this is what Prabhupada said is the meaning of the Hare Krishna mantra. When we're chanting Hare Krishna mantra, it is a prayer to the Lord, please engage me in your service. Please accept me. Please give me the strength to serve you. And Prabhupada said, it's a prayer to, the, to Krishna. It's also the answer to our prayers. When we're chanting Hare Krishna, it's both a prayer and the answer to our prayers. And so it's a very wonderful system of approaching God by chanting His holy name through the Maha Mantra. People generally, materialistic people, very, you know, when they're a little pious, they come and pray to God and they ask God for so many things. That's a little pious. A lot of other people, they won't even pray to God. But at least when people are a, a little pious, they come to God. They come in distress. Krishna describes seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, four kinds of people who surrender to him. They're pious. So, some come in distress. Actually, many come in distress. So that distress brings them to Krishna. But then they have to go on from that point. They have to go on and develop knowledge and understand more about God, about the Lord and our relationship with Him. Because they don't know, they don't know anything about Him. So that's why they're coming and praying to him and asking for so many things. They think God is something like our order supplier. You go in the shop and you ask the shopkeeper, give me rice, give me sugar, give me ghee, like this, you know. And so we go to God and we have a big list of what we want. Of course. 
it's, it's not the proper way, it's not the highest, but it's a start. And at least because they're approaching God and they're recognizing God as the controller, as the proprietor, then it, it, that's good, that's pious. And that can bring them to a higher level. They can go on to understand more about God and then they'll understand more that we don't need to pray to God for material things. We need to get the real blessings of God, which is devotional service. You can see, for example, we pray uh, Lord Brahma's prayers in the Brahma Samhita. Is he praying for anything? When we sing every morning, Govinda Madhipur Sham Tamaham Bajami, those are prayers from the Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma's prayers. Is he asking for anything? No, what's he doing? He's just describing Krishna. He's describing Krishna, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord. He's adapted playing on the flute with blooming eyes like lotus petals, whose head is bedecked with peacock feather, whose figure of beauty is tinged with a hue of blue clouds, whose unique loveliness is charming millions of cupids. So he, Brahma is just glorifying. So prayer is not just only to ask for something, but we want to praise, we want to glorify the Lord. That's the, the higher purpose of prayer. Is it clear? Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll go ahead here. Ishwara, Jiva and Prakriti, right? We have a relationship between these things. Ishwara is the supreme controller. We see that he, we are, we are the jiva. We are spiritual by nature. We are spiritual. We are Brahman, but we are tiny parts of the Brahman. And we have the tendency to fall under the material nature. Why? Because we try to exploit Prakriti. The jiva wants to enjoy Prakriti without God. We're meant to serve God, but we, we, we simply want to enjoy the Prakriti independently of God. That's the problem. And this Prakriti is belonging to God. It's his property. It's under his control. The material nature is under the direction of Krishna, the Supreme Controller. So there, there is relationships, right? The, the laws of nature. Who made the laws? Prakriti, they we say the laws of nature. Who made the laws? They're made by the Ishwara, the Supreme Controller. There's a beginning, and there's an end. And after the end, then there's a beginning again. There's again creation. So this is the material world. Yes? Gyan, perfect knowledge of the constitution of the body, the constitution of the individual soul, and the constitution of the super soul is known in terms of Vedic knowledge, Vedic literature as Gyan. That is the opinion of Krishna. Thirteen. Chapter 13, text 3, purport. So, Gyan means understanding the soul and the super soul and the body also. That's perfect knowledge. Okay? So, here's your work. Little exercise for you. Make a poster. Actually, we could say a, a diagram, if you like, rather than a poster. Make a diagram showing the relationship between Krishna, living entities, material energy, with reference to appropriate verses and analogies from Bhagavad Gita. And we'll give each group some verse to work with. Right? How many people do we have here today, Yagya? 17, Maharaj. Seven, 17. Okay, so uh, maybe we could make six, six groups. There'll be only two in one group. But six groups would be good, I think. 
if we have six six groups and then group one will do seven point five and well of course we have six groups maybe I should change these one two three I should be group one this should be a rather than one and group a group a seven point five and there'll be two groups group one and two and group B will do nine and ten and group B and and there will be na, na, chapter nine verse ten that should be done by our group three and four and then group this is group C will do fifteen seven and that will be done by five and six so we've got six groups right Okay, so group one and two, we'll do group A, then three and four, we'll do nine and ten, and five and six, we'll do fifteen seven. Is it clear? Here's the question. Make a poster showing the relationship. Make a diagram showing the relationship between Krishna, the living entities, and material energy. And give some appropriate analogy or verses. Shall I open the rooms now, Maharaj? Yeah, go ahead. Do it now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So we have to do 15 now. 15 points. Yes, Prabhu. So, you can, you can spend a couple of minutes and just read the, the verse. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. The purport. And then we'll, we'll discuss it. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Right now. Oh, by the way, Ajivan Prabhu, you did a nice presentation last night. Yeah, yesterday, Prabhu?
This meeting is being recorded. This meeting is being recorded. Are exploiting the other resources but then it controlled by thread and then maybe the lord on top like something like that because actually we also don't know that we are being controlled and then um and then outside the bubble we can show that probably once you surrender or once you realize that we you know have a relationship with the lord then we come out of this illusory energy or i don't know something like that. I think uh, that uh, the second aspect of coming out of bubble is not mentioned in the verse. Um, it's not like coming out, but the last paragraph does talk about the uh, living entities become free from the influence of illusory material energy. He attains that stage called Mukti. So it's not really mentioned coming out, but I was just saying to compare, we could use it. So maybe we can... I mean, that's, that's the fine. Lord may be smiling that why these ignorant entities are exploiting. So maybe we can show Lord smiling. Sure, bro. That's fine. Other you say with this meeting is being recorded. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. We are, uh, uh, Bharat Prabhu is actually uh, making, uh, he's putting the pictures together. Okay. We are discussing uh, 9.10. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are, uh, uh, I mean, thinking of putting a picture of Krishna or Karnata Shai Vishnu uh, lying in the fossil ocean and by his mere glance, uh, all the, uh, 
material nature and uh, all moving and non non moving beings are being all are working under uh, his glance uh, and also there is an example uh, given in the uh, purport where uh, how the fragrance of the flower uh, reaches the person the smelling power of the person but still the flower is quite far up, far away or detached from the person so uh, we are trying to get some pictures for that also and try to depict that maharaj oh very very nice very good yes maharaj okay i'll leave you with it you're doing well thank you okay hari krishna maharaj this meeting is being recorded So mother father and children mm-hmm. It's also the, the, there is a, another example with flower yeah smell like the fragrance uh that's so what should we talk about about the these two example our mind is <coughs> restless <laughs> I'm sorry mother what you're saying mother Prabhu usually Prabhu uh who uh what should I say um intelligent maybe <laughs> because our mind prevails uh, it's very difficult to let us make a simple drama mother because we will not have so much time so which have been wrong the feather i can draw the feather like this i'm just uh, finish are you drawing this. something yeah yes mother i'm trying ah, i see okay i'm disturbing you i'm sorry no, i'm sorry <laughs> this meeting is being recorded that they are separated expansions or uh, fragmental parts okay okay or fragmental parts okay uh i'm trying to remove this This meeting is being recorded. Have you guys finished? Yes, um, what we're going to do is this little post that we'll work on it together. Okay. We are bringing some of the points that we're going to present. Okay. So, uh, he'll be doing the drawing. Okay. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing a drawing. We'll work that? together. Uh-huh. How much time does he need to finish? Just five minutes, my lad. Just five minutes. Mm-hmm. This meeting is being recorded.
यज्ञ यज्ञ यस महाराज आई थिंक यू कैन क्लोज द रूम प्रभु ओके So everyone back? Yeah. Okay. So let's see what you got. Group one. We got some drawings to show. Hare Krishna Maharaj ji. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have not made that kind of level of drawing, but uh, we have discussed something. A kind of flow chart I uh, have prepared. You so, got a flow chart. Let's see. Yes. Where is it? Just, uh, just a second. Op open the camera. You have to have a ca yeah. open the camera. I'm doing that. Uh, are you able to see? No. <laughs> Where's your camera? I don't. Oh. Can you explain? Uh, okay, go ahead. Explain. Tell us. Can uh, can see anything? Yeah, we have uh, we have discussed that uh, in the seven point five purport, uh, there are three kinds of energies. Uh, on the below level, there is material nature, and above that is the living entity. And the superior than both of them is the superior energy that is Lord Krishna himself. So, uh, uh, being a living entity, we thought that we, Lord has given us a free will due to which we are thinking that we are the real proprietor, that we can uh, do anything what we want to do, uh, how we can be exposed material nature uh, as in this form of life, what's going on that uh, most of the people are... Uh, destroying the nature, cutting the trees, all that. So due to which they suffer by the three modes of material nature, uh, that is Adi, Bhautik, Adi, Devik and Adhyatmik. And, uh, uh, but, and, and they also forgot that the main purpose of coming to this earth planet is to serve Lord Krishna. Uh, due to this forgetfulness, they, uh, they are in the situation of distress. But okay, all, they, all right, all right, all right, that's enough. Let's, who, who else did this verse? Who else? Who, where's the other group? The group number two. Who was doing this? What's the verse? Which verse you were doing? 7.5. 7.5. Okay, group two. Yeah, yeah Maharaj. Yes. Mataji uh, is showing the... Uh, read the verse. Read 7.5. Verse 7, chapter 5. Read the verse. Yeah, is a No, read the translation. Read the translation. Besides this, O mighty Arjuna, there is another superior energy of mind, uh, which comprises the living entities who are exporting the resources of this material, inferior nature. Okay. Did you manage to draw something? Uh, yeah, Mataji has drawn. Uh, uh, this image, Let's if you can see. Can we see it? Parad, here it is. Yeah, you... I'm showing it. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Can you explain so, to us now on the top here, Lord Krishna? 
is smiling watching yeah. it yeah uh, 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 and in the big oh, yeah mabai mana majan prabhu you speak <laughs> uh, okay uh, thanks for that so in the in the below actually you know uh, mataji has drawn the oil rig on the left hand side and then uh, also the oil uh, roller which 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 actually you know uh, uh, digs deep into the sea and 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 also trying to catch the fishes so it is like a very exploitation of the sea by virtue of drilling for the oil and simultaneously uh, also catching the fish and simultaneously actually killing the uh, sea creatures for the pleasure of the tongue so that is what i think we have shown uh, uh, the exploitation uh, of the inferior material energy by the superior uh, uh, marginal energy of krishna and and krishna uh, is actually seeing as uh, tathastha the uh, the observer of the exploitations of the man oh i see krishna is the observer let's see that drawing again can you show the Mataji, picture again uh, go a little bit behind mataji just go a little bit behind yeah just just come a little bit further yeah, yeah that's fine so if you see on the fish uh, trawler there are uh, uh, humans and the uh, inferior energy of krishna is all these sea creatures and the uh, this uh, material nature and krishna on the top who's observing oh i see okay <laughs> you didn't put any quotes or any did you write anything there you didn't put any verses in oh my gosh i didn't write anything <laughs> okay anyway you did something thank you nice okay let's go ahead group number 3 which verse you're doing group 3 hari krishna maharaj ji we are doing 9.10 krishna maharaj Yeah. Group three. Who's the spokesman? Maharaj Bharat said we are doing nine point ten. Read so the verse. So we are representing our people that we have made. Read the verse. Yes, Maharaj. Just wait a minute. Uh, uh, Maya Dakshin Jina Prakriti. Read the so English. Yeah, Just read the translation. Chara. Just read the trans. Sorry, Maharaj. Read the translation. Thank you. This material nature is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings. By its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Okay. So, did you draw something? Have you got a picture? Yes, Maharaj. Just showing you. So actually, I am not able to share my screen, Maharaj, oh. to display. I need to write. Let me make you the co-host, Prof. Okay, ma'am. Okay, Prof. Okay, okay. 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 You are your co-host now. Please try sharing the screen. Please. Is my screen visible now, Maharaj? Yes. Now we can see Mahavishnu on the casual ocean. So, like here, the supreme personality of Godhead here uh, uh, depicted the Ishvara, supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, so then comes the Mahavishnu. All the bubbles are emanating from him, and the n number of bubbles, and from the same Mahavishnu is there. And in the middle, the top Lord Krishna has been depicted. Uh, from which the Mahavishnu Garbhodak Sanskrit Daksha is to appear from the Lord Krishna himself. They are part of him. Coming to the next slide, explaining the material nature, the emotes. So, like uh, as we are on the Earth planet, we are fighting or uh, doing any activity that are being controlled by the demigods. Uh, we are just like a puppet uh, performing on the on this plane, Earth plane, and it is all under the guidance of Lord Krishna. Okay. Then coming to the next slide, like according to our desires, we perform our activities. 
like it is has been in the field like god is constant companion of living entity as a parmatma or a super soul therefore he can understand the desires of an individual soul as one can smell the flavor of kava beans here mm. so he understands our desire and he allows us to fulfill our desires he never forces us to not fulfill our desires so he give us a freedom but we should utilize our freedom in the right way mm. so like one person is smoking calling so he is misusing his senses not not using it in service of krishna but krishna is observing everything okay and in the second picture also like uh, the person is not in he unconscious so there also the lord krishna is evident everything now coming to the next slide uh, like here is a um, lord krishna is there in every living entity there is a presence of lord from this picture we can see there are animals trees uh, big birds Uh, so in every body the lord krishna desires as a super super soul or mahatma then coming to the next slide uh, here like there is a family ghas family so they are getting the benediction from dami gods and lord krishna because they are engaging their senses in the service of krishna okay yeah then the last slide the uh, here depicts like we take birth again and again when we go from one body to transmigration of body from Um, but we, um, boy would to you, you to child would to you, then you to a uh, young age, then old age, then die, then again the birth. All right. Yes. Good. Then check the video. All right. Thank you, Prabhu. Let's group number four. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, we we have drawn something and then uh, we try to present something also simultaneously. Okay. So we would like to share this. Uh, our screen yes young naprabha make them co-host yes sir i'm making them oh very nice so yeah manaj does something you know, whatever it came up uh -huh. so as we can see in the diagram krishna has a eternal father is so happy just playing the flute and enjoying with his covered friends so krishna also says in bhagavad gita i am the father so lord krishna as a supreme father uh, through using the material nature uh, he actually injects all the living entities in the womb of material nature and they come actually come out of it and then uh, they take the different species and uh, different forms so And then we try to explain that even though he is taking part uh, to create the material uh, nature and the living entities in different forms, he has nothing to do with this material world. Uh, so, but he creates by his glance and ardents in uh, the material nature. Uh, I, we would say in summary, material nature without the supreme mental independence of the supreme person of Godhead cannot do anything. Even though their material nature cannot do anything. But, but by the will of uh, individual jivas, uh, we can see in the draw. They, they even though they took the different species, but they don't looks like really happy. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, yeah. So as as I so try to present like it, jivas took the different forms according to their desire. Someone wants to eat so much, and then they took the bhatta as a. elephant and someone wants to enjoy the senses without uh, knowing in the mode of ignorance and they take the birth as a um, hawks <laughs> and then in case someone wants to fly and then takes the birth as a flyers uh, insects yeah so this is how in the natural marriage all right thank you prabhu yes very nice was well, here group 5 
माइंड so here in this words uh, we can see uh, on the top we can see uh, krishna has been represented he is the father of all the living entities and uh, uh, krishna expands himself into uh, two portions we can see first one is primary expansion uh, which is the vishnu tattva under which all the uh, uh, various uh, expansions of lord all the various uh, avatars of lord uh, come like uh, lord narsimha lord ram etc and other side we can see the secondary expansions or the fragmental parts of the lord that are living entities or jivas now although it has been mentioned that living entities are the fragmental parts uh, uh, still uh, prabhupad has mentioned here in the purport that uh, being the fragmental part also it does not mean that we have been cut off from the eternal lord uh, as it has been uh, also mentioned in uh, जरा not remembering and uh, uh, because we have come into contact with material nature we are uh, misusing our uh, uh, the small individuality or the small uh, sorry independence which we have got uh, so because we are misusing that individ uh, that uh, uh, individual uh, this uh, independence Uh, that's why we are called the conditioned soul and when we come into the contact with material nature uh, we act like this that uh, we are we have forgotten what is our relationship with krishna and that we are his servants and we have to serve him and uh, then that we are exploit the prakriti um, because of uh, because of our being into the influence of our senses and mind so we are not controlling our senses and mind our senses and mind are controlling us and also prabhupad has mentioned here that uh, about uh, false ego and mind that uh, false ego and mind are the chief agent which are actually the uh, driving us into the material existence because we are not able to control our senses mind and false ego we again and again take birth in this material nature and uh, there was one analogy also had been given the uh, books like this that uh, we are fragmental parts of uh, the lord uh, that means that uh, although um, we as the uh, lord is like the ocean and we are just like the drop of water of the ocean uh, in uh, quality uh, we are same but quantitatively uh, we are not same so that is one of the analogy another analogy uh, is like that of gold okay uh, so we can consider gold uh, god as gold but if we are having one uh, certain uh, ring uh, of that gold that uh, we can relate it to the living entities all right so, uh, all right fine that was our submission thank you very much yes thank nice you. good work in a short time thank you let's hear group 6 hey krishna my dear nam please accept my respectful obeisance So we were given 15.7. <clears throat> Mama, I am sure you will okay. Jiva Buddha Sanatana, Mana Shastani Indriyani, Prakriti Shastani Karshati. Translation: The living entity in this conditioned world are my eternal fragment, fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. So it's a very simple image you can see. Can you see, Maraj? No. Where have you put it? Where no, I'm not presenting my screen. I'm just switched on my camera. What? What's your name? Jeevan. I don't see anything. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. You're not even on my list. I don't know where you gone. Huh? Where is it? You, you can see in the participants list where are you can oh, Let me see. G1. Okay. Here we are. Can you see, see my camera, Maharaj? Mm, well, <laughs> very faint. I can't. You cannot? It, it All right. Uh, okay. I can see it a little bit. What, what? Okay, I'll, I'll just point out. Okay, that is just better with the light on. Maybe you put a light on it. Yeah, yeah, just, just a second, Maharaj. I'll just switch on the light. Can you see it now, Maharaj? No. Not. Can you put some light on it? Uh, is it more visible now? it is visible, but I think Maharaj is in the gallery view, so he is not able to see it clearly. Oh. So if, uh, I think Yagnarishan can highlight Jeevan Prabhu, so that only he is visible to Maharaj. Yes, can we highlight Jeevan Prabhu? Okay. Can you show me what I'm supposed to do here? Yeah, you have to pin the video. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a bit better now, yeah. You can see me, Maharaj? You can see the camera? Yeah. Yeah, so here I've made a flow chart. So here's Krishna. Here's the living entity. Mm -hmm. Here's Krishna within the living entity, that is Paramatma, and here are our senses. So here, like, we are struggling with the senses because we are not, you know, we haven't focused on the Lord. So uh here are the six senses that are haywired. They're completely off. Okay. Either in the mode of passion, in the mode of ignorance. But we have another picture which is here it's it's like a closed cycle so here's krishna here's a living entity here's a paramatma and the senses so when we focus it on to the lord so it, it becomes like a closed cycle the senses are not haywired they're, they're completely focused on to the lord so it becomes like a complete cycle okay all right ram narasimha prabhu yes nice uh -huh. Krishna. so the first point of Prabhupada is mentioning in this purport, in this verse is identified that the living entity is clearly given. The living entity is a fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. It is not that he assumes an individual individuality um, in this conditional life. And in, when he's liberated, then he, uh, he becomes one with the Supreme Lord. He's eternal very fragmented, that is how it's mentioned. Uh, the separate expansion, uh, the living entity, or this is his like his eternal duty, he's the eternal servitor, that is his position. When the mind is in the mode of goodness, or it is mentioned in one part of the proper proper mention, he's bound by, when he's become affected by material uh, nature, uh, He's bound by the false ego and the mind also, along with the senses. Uh, and which is, the mind is a chief agent that drives him uh, in this material existence. When the mind is in the mode of goodness, he achieves, his activities are generally good. When the mind is in the mode of passion, then his activities become troublesome. The living entity experiences a lot of trouble in his life. And when the mind is in, in the mode of, of ignorance, then what happens is that he, he, when the, he goes down into the, uh, the, the lower species. Okay, so, okay, that, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so we can see the, something of the relationship between the Lord, the living entities and the Prakriti. It's a nice topic. It comes up in other places in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, let me see. Can we go back to the screen here? All right. Need to finish off this PPT. Okay, understanding. We explained the difference between spirit and matter and analogies from Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, the body and the soul. 
There's so many nice verses there. We talked about transmigration from Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter and 15th chapter, changing the body. And now we've been talking about the relationship between the Ishwara and the Jiva and the Prakriti from Bhagavad Gita, different places. Preaching application. We spoke about life. Is, life doesn't come from chemicals, but it comes from life. In relation to Bhagavad Gita purports 217, help us to establish life is coming from life. The transcendental nature of Krishna's appearance also was discussed from the fourth chapter. And some analogies we introduced, spoke about them. All right? And Prabhupada's final quote, Prabhupada said, I am the kicking God. So how one can become God, rascal? That is not possible. God knows everything. If one knows everything, then you can accept him as God. Otherwise, don't accept. As soon as somebody says, I am God, kick him on his face. Yes, you are God. I am God. I am the kicking God. That should be the answer. I am the shoe beater God. Now you protect yourself if you are God. So don't accept this false God. From Bhagavad Gita 13.3 in Paris in 1973. Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, so, any final questions? Anyone? Okay, so then we'll meet next week and we'll finish off everything with the two classes remaining. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.